Welcome to part 3 of ELEC week 37. Now we are going to look at three classic amplifiers. Like the non-inverting amplifier, the buffer and the inverting amplifier. We are going to try to find an expression for the voltage gain, also V out or V in, and we hope to find an expression related to the circuit component. We are also going to look at the buffer that has a sp that is a special case of the non-inverting amplifier, but it has uh, some interesting. It has only a gain of one, uh, but it has some nice features that are good for sensors and interfacing to mic controllers. We'll look at how we find the expression for this one and why we use it at all, and. It, Non-inverting amplifier, we also hope to find an expression for the voltage gain, also related to the circuit components. Yeah, let's get started with the non-inverting amplifier. First, we draw the op amp. And since it's a non inverting amplifier, means that we actually connect the sensor or our useful input signal to the non inverting input, V in. And to the output, we will have two resistors in a series to ground R1 and RF and we'll connect the midpoint between them to the inverting input. So this is um, the non-inverting amplifier circuit. We hope to find an expression for the voltage gain V out over V in so that we simply can calculate the gain ratio based on the components. We will apply the rules we learned in part 2 of ELEC week 37 and the rules are for the ideal case. So rule 1 we know in the ideal case the raw gain of the up amp is infinite. For rule 2, we know for the uh, ideal case that R in is infinite and R out is 0 ohm. And rule 3, is the current in the up amp They are zero. So there is not running any current into the input pins of the op amp. Well, for further analysis we have to check. Do we have negative feedback? Well, we have V out here. There is some fraction of the signal going back to the inverting input. Yes, we have. Okay, then we can apply rule 4 that was only valid if we had negative feedback. And rule 4 uses that the raw gain is infinite. So then the voltage at the non inverting input here, E plus. That's also V in. Minus V minus, that's here, well, minus. That's the voltage at the inverting input pin will become zero. So at this point here, we have a virtual ground, meaning that this potential here is zero. So 
that tells me that V in actually is at this uh, pin 2. I will, because of the op amps negative feedback and gain, it will amplify the output so much that this voltage potential here, feed it back to this point, will become the same size as Vn. Otherwise, rule 4 will not be true. So that's the trick of it. So, now I know I have negative feedback and I have this uh, virtual ground here. I have to find out the type of feedback. We have two types. We have voltage feedback and we have operational feedback. So which type do I have here? Voltage feedback was when I had V in, as the source signal, connected to the non-inverting input. Ah, we have voltage feedback because this input signal is connected to the non-inverting input. That was the sign for voltage feedback. So, voltage feedback. And that means I can analyze the circuit by help of voltages. Uh, in this case, the, the feedback resistors are a series connection. And the midpoint voltage is feedback to the circuit. It's actually a voltage divider. Oh, yeah. A voltage divider. So I will draw, redraw the circuit here. So I see it a bit better. So I have V in here because of the potential is the same. And I have F, uh, uh, the feedback resistor here and R1 and V out here. So applying the voltage divider rule, I get that V in equals V out times the the resistor I like to take the voltage out of over and then the sum of the resistors. So now I have an expression for V in where I have V out in two. So I now just need to solve for this expression here. Try to get this one to look somehow like this. So I have to rewrite it a bit. So the next step is try to move this one over here, so V in over V out equals R1 over RF plus R1. Okay, so I'm here, now I just need to flip it, V out over V in equals RF plus R1 over R1. Yes, nice. Um, I can beautify it a bit, V out or V in, so it becomes RF or R1 plus 1. And that's the classic expression for the non-inverting amplifier. So the voltage gain can be found as the ratio between the resistors and the voltage divider plus 1. So this amplifier always have a gain higher than one. Nice. So this is how we did the analysis um, for the non-inverting amplifier. Let's go for the buffer circuit. That's the special case of the non-inverting amplifier. So, the buffer, I just draw the non-inverting amplifier again. And I have my source here, V in. And I just draw the resistors as before. The special case with the buffer is that the feedback resistor 
is zero ohm and r1 is infinite ohm that's the special case so how could i redraw the circuit a bit so i can see that i'll draw it down here B in and B out. So if the feedback resistor is zero ohm, that's a short. So I have to short this like this. Okay, now this is a short, and if it's infinite, R1 is infinite, that's actually an open circuit, so I let it stay open. So this is the redrawn circuit of the non-inverting amplifier as a buffer and what is so good about it since the the gain of it v out over v in is one and we can apply the, the the feedback rules on it all for rule one two and three there's not going in current in i have negative feedback um I have, as before here, voltage feedback, I have the virtual ground and because of the virtual ground I know that this potential here is actually the same. So V in is at this point, so V out and V in is equal size and that makes the voltage gain 1. But why do we need that circuit? Why couldn't I just use the non-inverting amplifier? Well, sometimes I don't need a gain and the extra resistors can actually complicate the circuit a bit. It's extra cost if I don't know need it. But the good thing about the buffer is that it, it kind of avoid loading my sensor. If I just connected a sensor with a high in that has um, a non-ideal characteristic it actually have a small internal air out if i have another circuit that needs that voltage and um, this uh, circuit i just draw as a black box it has an input resistor. If this resistor is small, I get a high current running here. A high current will make a voltage drop on the internal resistor of the sensor, meaning that V in no longer is Vs, the sensor's original voltage. It will be smaller so actually having a circuit here that needs the sensor signal but the input resistor is small loads the sensor pulling a high current and gives a voltage drop so now the sensor actually have an error bigger than it's perhaps specified in the data sheet and that's the problem if you have a circuit you don't know the input resistor of so that you can evaluate it. A good thing is to put a buffer in between because the buffer have a very high input resistor and a, a low output resistor and a low output resistor can give you a circuit here that needs the sensor signal enough current for its internal resistor to get, get the signal further but it avoids loading the sensor so here i get uh, in if i use the buffer i'm very huge so i only pull a tiny current and get a tiny voltage drop over the internal resistor so i'm buffering the sensor uh, to avoid loading and pulling a big current and get an internal voltage drop that's the trick of using the buffer and it's a simple setup it's just an up amp in a short circuit to the non-inverting sorry the inverting uh, input pin from the out and then the connecting the sensor to it so that's very simple and a nice way of buffering any sensors that has 
and um, are not capable of supplying a big current. Let's go to the last circuit, the inverting amplifier. Let's draw the inverting amplifier again. We draw the up band, but this time I draw the inverting input at top and uh, non-inverting at the bottom. Because I need to attach my sensor signal me in here to the amplifier, but here at first I have to mount a resistor and feeding back a resistor. So the circuit looks like this, RF here and R1. And the non-inverting input I just, for simplicity, ground. So this is how the inverting amplifier looks like. And I like to analyze it, just as I did with the non-inverting amplifier, to find an expression for the voltage gain V out over V in. Okay, let's apply the rules. Rule 1. The raw gain of the amplifier is infinite. That's fine. And rule 2 is that our in here sitting here in between the, the pins is also infinite and our out is zero ohm so here get the full uh, signal out then rule three that the currents going into the up end also <laughs> is zero, so there is not running any current into or out of the pins of the oven. Well, now I have to check, do I have negative feedback before I continue? I check, here we are out and then I feed something back to the Inverting input. Yes, I have negative feedback. Then I can use rule 4. If I have negative feedback and I have infinite raw gain, then I can apply rule 4. That states that the voltage at the non-inverting input minus the voltage at the inverting input will become zero. So at this point here the potential is zero. Because I grounded the pin at the non-inverting input here, I have zero volt here, I also have zero volt here, meaning because of rule four I also have zero volt at that point. Hmm. That's good to know um, for the further analysis. Now I have to check what kind of voltage feedback or operational feedback do I have in order to help me finding out how should I analyze this circuit. Well, first, what kind of feedback do I have? My sensor signal, V in, is connected to the inverting pin. Oh, that was this, uh, the indication of operational feedback. And operational feedback is, um, here we use currents to solve, to find an expression for the voltage gain. So we have to use current to find an expression for the voltage gain. Let's start. Here, 
I just say I have a current going to this node here. And for V out, I also have a current going to this node too. And we apply Kirchhoff's current law. So E1 must equal um, going node. And it's going opposite, going in. So it means minus E. Two new plus equals zero. So it means E one equals E two going to the node and becomes zero, yeah. So they are equal, but they are sign here. I'm missing a sign. Yes. Careful. Now I need to find an expression for E1. Um, E1 is actually just V in divided by R1. So E1 is V in by R1 because we have ground level here. So it's just a sensor looking with the current to ground, even though this is um, a potential is zero, um, the up amp will fuel so much current and voltage that's needed that this point here will become zero. So now I have expressions for E1. Now I need expressions for E2. Okay. E2 is, of course, V out divided by RF. So E2 is V out divided by RF. Then I use this one to put them together. So V in over R1 equals minus V out over RF. Well, now I can move this one over here and that over here. So it becomes RF over R1 equals, um, I'll take the sign over here, V out over V in. And that's the voltage gain of the amplifier. So the voltage gain of the amplifier is simply the ratio between RF and R1 and with sine inversion. So Vn will become inverted and gained up. Yeah. Um, a small curiosity is that this circuit actually can design um, the input resistance or um, the resistance that will load the sensor. So I can design it to have the right size. I don't need to guess what the op amp has a huge resistor, I will I can simply design because R1 will become the input resistance of the whole amplifier. So I can just state this one and also then just state find a value so that I get the gain. So R1 here is simply the input resistance of the inverting amplifier. Yes, so now we have looked at this. the non-inverting amplifier and the buffer, that's a special case um, of the inverting amplifier and the inverting amplifier. And we have used the rules from part two, rule one. 
about the raw gain of the operational amplifier for the idea case. And we have used rule 2 about R in and R out. And we have used rule 3 about the current into the pins of the op amp is zero, so there is no current running in the op amp. And we used um, there's negative feedback, and we have used that uh, rule 4 um, that states that we have a special uh, virtual ground to analyze it. And we used the two um, feedback types we have, voltage feedback and we have used operational uh, feedback, how we apply it to analyze circuits. Yes, thank you for now and see you next week.